Moore in Dr. Morris Cirillo's four-tape series, How to Win the Battle of the Tongue. Please, I tell you, the biggest trick of the enemy is when I see people sit in church and let their minds go off in this direction and that direction without the concentration and the piercing into the spirit world. I want you to think right now. I mean, there are desperate situations in this building. I can walk right down here and pick you out by the dozen. There are desperate situations in here. You've been talking failure. You've been talking cursing. You've been putting cursing into your circumstances and you don't realize it. Somebody I want you to forget every person in this building. I love you, beloved. God loves you. You wouldn't be here if God didn't love you. You'd be out some ball game tonight. You'd be sitting by some lake tonight. You'd be vacationing somewhere else tonight if God didn't love you so much. He made a divine appointment to meet you here in this school of ministry to set you free to bring you to a new position to put a new strength that's what God told me that's why he sent me on television he said Mars I want you to put a new strength into my body go ahead go ahead you can get the picture even now Come on, you can get the victory even now. You can penetrate even now. That's right, people. God's raising up a people that are going to be so saturated, so controlled by the Holy Spirit, they're going to walk in the same power, the same authority as Jesus did. God's going to pour out a special anointing upon their mouths. They're going to speak forth the words He places in their mouth with such power, with such anointing. You better stand, beloved. The power's too strong. It's awesome.
You told us we can't control our tongues. You're a liar. You told us we have to let things slip every now and then. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. We lay the axe to the root of the tree in the name of Jesus. We're only coming so far tonight, beloved. Now listen to me. You want me to be honest with you? Now listen to me. How many of you want the prophet of God to be honest with you? I wish I could stand up here. But if I'm a true prophet, I have to tell you the truth. How many of you believe Morris is a true prophet of God? Do you? I wish it was as easy as us standing here and me taking control over demons and devils and speaking the word and your tongue to be healed. I wish that was true, but it's not. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's nice to have the hoop for loop with Right, Mom? But God's calling us to a new level. Because there is a way that it comes. But it's not like that. And it's not me just coming down and taking, lay hands on you, and you're going out under the power. Now I got deliverance over my tongue. <laughs> that will last until you wake up tomorrow morning. <laughs> Come on, you want the truth? We're dealing with the root, brother. That's the heart and the mind. And when we go down in there and get into this inner inside of us, you're going to find out how the tongue, as well as the mind, has complete victory. With our hand raised, repeat this after God's servant. God, God is bringing us into a new dimension of power and victory where we will manifest the power and the authority that God has ordained and prepared for us in this end time hour where we will speak the word now in and specifically as you and I are talking and God is bringing us and raising us up to a new position of accountability God's end time people he's raising them up to a new position of responsibility he's raising them up to a new position of discipline remember what we said he's shown us one of the major factors within the church that's been hindering the completeness of the manifestation of the flow, of the power, of 
the Spirit of God through our lives. And the prophecy is this. God is going to pour out a special anointing upon our mouth. Like Isaiah, who received the coal from off of the altar, who saw a picture of himself when he saw the revelation of Almighty God and how God cleansed him from sin. And the confirmation was when that seraphim took that coal from off the altar and put it on his lips. I prophesy that God's end time people are going to speak forth words. And here's going to be the key and here's going to be the victory that God places in their mouth. Those words will come forth with power and anointing until their very enemies will be dumbfounded and unable to stand up against the end time body of Christ. We'll break down strongholds of the enemy. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 The weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are mighty, they are strong. God has given us the power. He's given us the ability to do what? To play patty cake with the devil? No, to demolish the power of the enemy. And do what? And bring every thought into captivity. God spoke to Jeremiah, 23rd chapter of Jeremiah, the 29th verse. This is what he said. He said, Is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? I prophesied to you again, excuse me, for, keep, for, for keeping on prophesying tonight, excuse me. The Word of God is going to come forth with such power that it will literally destroy the work of the enemy and free captives that are being held in the clutches of satanic oppression. We're going to see unique manifestations of the Word of God that's going to come forth from the mouths of people who rise up to a new position of accountability, responsibility, and discipline. They'll speak the word with boldness. The word will bring forth judgment. God told Jeremiah, the fifth chapter and the fourteenth verse, Because you speak this word, Jeremiah, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would. Look out. When men and women of God break through and tap the resources of an unknown power up until this time in the church. When the barriers are removed and when the pure stream of the Holy Spirit flows through God's end time people, the enemies of the Lord will become like wood and the word out of our mouth will be like fire. Somebody 
say, I'd like God to anoint my mouth. Luke 21, 15. Jesus is speaking. He said, for I myself will give you a mouth. How many of you know he gives us a new heart? How many of you know he gives us a new heart? He takes away the stony heart of flesh. You can't attain what Brother Shula was talking about unless you get a new heart because it's out of the heart that flows the issues of life. How many of you believe he gives us a new mind? How many of you know, brother, it's not God taking this old sinful mind of ours, but it's a transformation of the mind of Christ. That we have the ability to be able to have a 100% pure, a 100% clean, a 100% victorious mind. Because it's not ours, it's the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. You think God could give us a new mouth too? Oh, come on. Come on. Do you think if we surrender every part of our being up to Him, do you think He could give us a new mouth? He said, I myself will give you a mouth. And such and wisdom as all of your foes combined will be unable to stand against or to refute. Somebody say, I think I'd like to have that kind of mouth. Matthew 10, 19 and 20. Listen to it. Jesus said, Matthew 10, 19 and 20. When they deliver you up, take no thought. Now, I don't know whether you understand what God is trying to teach us. How many of you know it's so easy to become involved with the flesh? How many of you know it's so easy to think that we are weak and the world is strong? How many of you know it's so easy to think that they're the intelligent people and we're the dumbbells? I've got news for you, brother. This little preacher is just an orphan boy. But I don't mind talking to all the big Einsteins in all the world. <laughs> For it is not you that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. Beloved, how many of you believe it's time we come to the place where we can completely trust God. You can't do that by the flip of a coin. I'd love to come out here and wave a magic wand and just take a hold of the devil and call upon and, and the powers of God and bind the spirits of the enemy and just call the demons out of your tongue. It don't work that way. That's the way we've been trying to do it. It just doesn't work that way. There's a deeper way. 
We're going to go into it tonight. Are you ready for the journey? Luke 12, 12, listen to it again. For the Holy Ghost, remember the prophecy. God's going to anoint his people to speak. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. But I want to tell you tonight, beloved, before we can rise up, before we can speak the word in power and remember God is bringing us into a new dimension of power and victory where we will experience the power the authority that God has ordained for us before we can speak the word in power and the authority as God has planned God is calling us to a new position. A position of accountability. Are you willing to walk out of this school of ministry with a new spirit of accountability? Are you willing to walk out of this school of ministry with a new position of responsibility? Are you willing to walk out of this building as disciplined soldiers yeah. now these words that you and I speak in this battle for the tongue they determine the entire course of our life and Satan has been working to gain control of our tongues how many of you have been sensing now that God has brought this to your attention, how many of you have been sensing that you're in a real battle? Unfortunately, the devil has made inroads into the church. He's weakened the position of the church. You remember what the Word of God told us the first night of this meeting? That the church is in no condition for the power they're receiving the blessing the goosebumps the jerks the jiggle whoop, whoop, hallelujah oh was it not a beautiful meeting yes and then remember what we learned last night with one side of our mouth we bless God, we praise Him, we speak in other tongues, and then, just like the Word says that we learned last night, we turn around with the other side of our mouth and we speak the cursing and the bitternesses. The Bible tells us that stubbornness is as the sin of iniquity. Anybody here suffer with that? The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and idolatry. I wonder if that's not the reason why we have so much demon possession in the church. God's calling us to put a watch over our tongue. I'd like to say a lot more about the spirit of stubbornness. I'd like to say a lot more about the spirit of rebellion. But I'm going to just leave it tonight because we've got a long way to go. But let me just tell you that those two spirits are running rampant and prevalent in the church. And they're the cause of much of the hindering of the power of God from flowing through congregations today. Because people have gotten stubborn and people have gotten rebellious against the structure and the discipline and the accountability and the responsibility that they have to have to Almighty God and to those that God puts in authority over them. They don't want authority. Is 
that spirit. Well, I'm as good as the preacher. Who told you you are? Well, I'm as good as that man up there. Who told you you are? You better be careful. Don't you dare touch God's anointing. And you better understand that many are called, but few are chosen. And God said in the church, apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers for a purpose to do what? To tell you what to do. And to tell you how to act. told you I better not get started on that tonight. Somebody shout, the devil's a liar. Guard your tongue, beloved. Psalm 34, 13. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Psalm 17, 3. I am purpose of David, that my mouth shall not transgress. Paul told the Ephesians, let no foul or polluting language, evil word, unwholesome, worthless talk come out of your mouth. But only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others as it is fitting to the need and the occasion that it might be a blessing and give grace God's favor to those that hear it. Somebody say, death and life are in the power of my tongue. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. Jesus said, and I don't know whether you can take this or not tonight. I say unto you, every idol, say idol. idol. Better think about that. You may have to decide before you leave here whether you'll be a fanatic for Jesus. You may have to decide you remember how the Spirit of God taught us about bridling last night and putting the bit in our mouth and taking control of the reins? You may have to decide, and I pray that you do, decide to stand up and say, God, I'm going to be a candidate to be a fanatic because I want the full flow of the power, the anointing, the unlimited glory, the doxa, the same glory, brother, that Jesus had with the Father. He promises that you and I can have the manifestation of that doxa, not a glory that looks like the glory, not an anointing that looks like the anointing, not the Holy Ghost that looks like the Holy Ghost, but the same glory and the same anointing. Matthew 12, 36 and 37. But I say unto you, every idle word that men shall speak. Now, brother, either Jesus meant what he said. He was portraying himself as the biggest hypocrite that ever lived. I'm going to tell you something again, beloved, until the Holy Spirit burns it deep within our being. God's calling us to a new 
position of accountability. Don't you dare sit in this meeting and then just get all these wonderful times to jump up and shout without letting what is being spoken take root. Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. And I want you to take that word idle, put it deep in your spirit. It's translated from a Greek word. Argos, A-R-G-O-S. It means inactive. Idle words are inactive words. It means dead. Idle words are dead. You ever get frustrated about sometimes the people you're around, the words they speak, the things they want to talk about, the small talk, word idle argos in the Greek means unfruitful and it means barren words that have no life vain talk idle words barren words things that come out of our mouth that have no forethought, that have no purpose, that have no meaning, that have no direction. Let me read to you Ephesians 5, 4. Paul speaking to the Ephesians. I hope you're ready for this, beloved. Let there be no filthy, obscenity, indecency, nor foolish, sinful, silly. You ever get around some people and just listen to the silly talk? I don't know. Sometimes you feel like you want to tell them, Shut up! Nor cost, cor, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting or becoming. But the word tells us, use your voice for thankfulness and praise, as is becoming a child. David said, I'll bless the Lord at all times. He said, His praise is going to be continually. Excuse me for speaking in other tongues. <laughs> Say, Brother Shula, what are you doing? I'm talking to God. Didn't you know He was here? <laughs> he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but he speaketh unto God. Oh, kahari bi kiamando. Go ahead, praise Him with your English language, but then praise Him with the prayer language of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, it's all right. We're in that kind of meeting. It's all right. He kaporia saka. Shandolo mokaribiando. God, we give you praise. We worship you with these lips. David said in Psalm 145. Saints shall bless thee, O God. 
They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom. <laughs> they shall talk of thy power to make known to the sons of men the mighty and the glorious and the majestic acts of the kingdom of God. Oh, beloved, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Go ahead, give him praise. It's all right. If you don't praise him with those tongues, the rocks in this place will cry out. Somebody say it, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. We're either going to speak blessing to our life, to our circumstance, to our families, to the people that we meet, but we're going to speak cursing and death. I want you to go with me. Don't turn to it, but in the spirit, because you won't have time. To Numbers, the 13th chapter, the children of Israel spoke words that brought cursing and death. Now listen to me carefully. In spite of the promises of God. Are you telling me, Brother Srilo, I am telling you God can give you all the promises in this entire book. But if you do not learn how to appropriate those promises, and if you continue on losing the victory and the battle over your tongue as it concerns your circumstances and your families and your needs and your ministry and your finances you'll do exactly like the children of Israel did they spoke cursing and death into their circumstances in spite of the promise that God gave to them. Deuteronomy, first chapter, listen to it. Moses told the children of Israel, you are come unto the mountain of the Amorites which the Lord our God doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go and possess it. There was never any doubt That the will of God was for them to march forward. Beloved, let me tell you something. The Bible tells us he that wavereth is like a ship on a sea in a storm. 
God says, don't let that person think that they shall receive anything from the Lord. Centurion met Jesus. Typical. In the 8th chapter of the book of Matthew. And said, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. What did Jesus say? He said, I will come and heal him. Never any doubt, never any question. You know why? He was already pre-programmed to know the will of God. He never had to stop and look at a sick person and say, I wonder if it's God's will for you to be made whole. He knew he came here for this purpose to destroy the work of the enemy. He said, I will. He said, I will. He said, I will. He said, no question, no doubt. I know what my job is. He said, I'll do it. Somebody say the devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. We're going to empty our mouth out of confusion. Fear, doubt, worry. We're going to let, as we learned the other night, the Spirit, not us, the Spirit wield the sword of the Lord in our behalf. Go on up and possess it, Moses said. As the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee, Fear not, nor be discouraged. I'm going to tell you something, brother. God's message has never changed. Devil, you are a foul-mouthed liar. God's word has never changed. God's word always says, I will come. God's word always says, call upon me. Don't you ever let the devil get you off guard. Don't you let him shape your strategic position. And there's a couple down there that you've been allowing the devil to shape your strategic position. You better look at him. You better tell him to get your hands off your family. You better tell him that you and your husband are going to get ready. They didn't need to send up any spies. The word of the Lord was this. Go on up and possess it. It's already up. What do you need to go around snooping for? Oh, I just want to get a confirmation of what? Want to let the devil shape your strategy? You want to let him get you off balance? Took 12 men. Worst thing they could ever do. <laughs> Sent them to spy out the land. Took one from every tribe. After 40 days they came back. Ten of them came back with a negative report. They spoke fear. They spoke doubt. They spoke 
feet, they reported to the people that they were strong people in the land. The cities were walled cities. There were giants there. For the continuation of this message, please turn this tape over.